Okay, today I'm going to show you some different transfer techniques that we use in microbiology. So to start with, some cultures will be grown on a petri dish. It's a hard uh, auger is kind of like a gel type consistency. So it's a hard medium uh, that we will grow sometimes cultures on. Sometimes we will grow them on what we call a slant. That's where you've got the auger. Uh, in the auger, you can make different types of nutrients added to it. And so this would be a slant. You can inoculate that. And sometimes they will be grown in a liquid broth, as you can see in the test tube. Uh, it usually, um, when it's in liquid, bacteria will turn it cloudy, slightly cloudy. I don't know if you can tell that that has some particles in it. That's the bacteria. The, um, this has, was grown for about 24 hours. And so today what we're going to do is show you how we transfer from one medium to another. Now we also have what we call our inoculating loops and needles. Uh, inoculating needle is just a straight uh, piece here. We don't use that quite as often. The thing we use most often will be the inoculating loop. As you can tell, it has a, literally a loop at the end. And we'll use this to touch the bacteria in one medium and transfer it to another. Now we're always going to be working with the flame and working near that flame. General rule of thumb is that within about six, no more than eight inches around that flame is considered your sterile area. So you, whenever you open a petri dish, open a tube, you want to be within that, that range so that you don't get contamination from the air or some collie walking by, etc. So you always want to be working in that, that close area. Now for today, what I'm going to do is we have a stock culture that is growing on this petri dish. And I'm going to show you how to transfer it to another petri dish. So we're going from solid medium to solid medium. And then I'm also going to show you also to another solid medium, but that's going to be the slant. Oftentimes when you're working with test tubes, you may want before you get started is loosen the lead just so it'll be easier when you're ready to go for it. What you need to do to start off with is take your inoculating loop. In this case, we are using the loop. You need to stick it into the flame. This is an incineration. It is a way of sterilizing that loop. You're literally burning everything off. You want to get it where it's glowing nice and red that kills everything that has been on this loop. Now, you do not want to immediately stick it on the plate or you're going to kill everything because it's hot. And if you go, if you're impatient and you go a little too soon, you're going to hear a little sizzle. That means you just killed everything. Remember, bacteria are very small. Do you have to gouge into the plate? No. If you have enough that you can see it on the end of the loop, that is too much. So what we're going to do here, ideally you want to take just one colony. Now we're just going to show you how to transfer you. So you just take a little bit. You don't open that lid and fling it around. Keep the lid as closed as possible. We are not going for an isolated colony. So all we are going to do is just go back and forth with the loop. The bacteria that are on the edge of this loop will be transferred to that plate. That is now inoculated. Flame your loop again at the end to kill anything that's on it. You'll notice I flipped that Petri dish upside down. We always incubate Petri dishes upside down, in an inverted position. The reason for that is because you can see on this plate that has been stored, uh, we store it in the fridge after 24 hours, you get condensation on it. When you are trying to grow cultures, that condensation will mess up trying to get individual colonies. So we always invert them. So now I'm going to take another uh, sample from the plate. Now I'm going to go to the test tube. Unscrew the lid. You're going to pass the lip of that test tube through the flame. That is to reduce potential contamination that may have been on it. Stick the loop in to the tube all the way down towards the bottom and then you just kind of zigzag up. Flame the loop, or flame the, the tube, excuse me. Now flame the loop again. 
So the test tube, you notice that I flamed it before and after opening it. Once again, trying to reduce any potential contamination that, that could occur. You flame your loop between every process. Now you're going to want to label everything. Some people will label with tape. Some people will label with a Sharpie. I recommend if you're labeling with a, a Sharpie on a Petri dish, label it on the bottom just in case something were to happen and the lid would come off. You don't know what's grown on that plate. So in this case, I'm labeling it with the initials of the organism. We use Serratia marcescens. I will put today's date on there. I am also going to put my initials on here. So if anybody has a question, they know who inoculated it. The initials up here in A stand for the media. So we know that it is um, a nutrient auger. Just about anything will grow on that. Sometimes you may want to label things with a piece of tape. Whichever you choose to do, it does not matter. Um, just as long as you do label everything. These will be incubated at room temperature. Sometimes you'll incubate at 37 degrees, sometimes at room temperature. It just depends on what you are doing. And for this particular exercise, um, I do want to go at room temperature. And we will go for 24 hours. Sometimes you may need to go for 48 hours. Once again, it depends on what test you are using. So on my label, once again, I'm going to put the organism, I'm going to put the date, and I'm going to put my initials on here. And we'll just place that on the tube. Once again, that way there is no question about what is on your sample. So that's how you would go from a, a solid medium to a solid. I showed you both with the plate and with the slant. As you can see, we have growth here. Uh, bacteria oftentimes will look kind of a beige, depending on the species, maybe a yellowish. This particular uh, bacteria, Serratia marcescens, at room temperature, often has this reddish pink color uh, to it. If you grow it at 37 degrees, you do not see that color. It'll just be beige. But you can see um, on the plate the streak where we went with our loop, and we have growth wherever the loop had touched, and also then on the slant. A lot of growth down at the bottom, and then it extends up along the slant towards the top. Uh, oftentimes you will look at the different characteristics. Nice heavy growth there. Notice the color. One the big things you'll want to notice is, is the pigmentation whenever you have um, a bacterial culture you're working with that can give you clues as to the identification of it.